All right, welcome everybody to week 10, day one. I just got back from a weekend of sea shanties and Irish music and stuff like that. They asked me what my favorite Assassin's Creed was, and uh, Black Flag is obviously the correct answer there. Um, I'm installing Odyssey based on the recommendations of my 12 o'clock class, who said it was really good. It's on sale right now for like 75% off, so it's like, ah, hell, why not? Let's do it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a pretty important topic, and that topic is classes. It's really the last major topic for this class. <laughs> classes is the last topic for this class. Sorry, it's going to get confusing. I know. <laughs> this class talks about classes. And you know what other class talks about classes? CSI 41. So CSI 41 is really the class in which we discuss classes and um, really get into detail on it. This class, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to call them structs. I'm going to call them structs um, because the struct and the main are the same thing. And, uh, it'll be less confusing that way. So uh, I'm introducing this now because the pointers, uh, Zybooks, which may or may not be broken, which I might have to delete and, and redo the whole thing. Um, I, there's some, like when students are trying to submit to um, Zybooks via Canvas, it's like erroring out or something. So I'm going to probably delete everything and uh, remake everything from scratch and see if that fixes it. Um, but the Zybooks for this week due on Friday involves uh, a little bit of classes and so we're gonna we're gonna go over that today now the what I'm gonna show you at first is things that you should uh, already know if you don't know it ask a question if you do know it then just kind of you know feedback say yeah I understand what's going on as we go along so let's say that we wanted to do a simple little customer relations management database, right? So we're going to have a, a file that's got a bunch of customers. When we launch the program, it loads them all from disk. And uh, then the user can uh, add things to the, they can add things to the, uh, the database. They can delete people from it. Uh, and then when we quit, it will save it all back to disk. Okay. So I've got here a file called customer database that was made in the previous section. And it's got uh, a name, an address, and a social security number for uh, different, apparently, sea shanties. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these are, you know, it, it's a, you know, name, address, social. I didn't feel like typing out a nine-digit social, so I was just kind of whacking away on the keyboard there. Okay. So we've got five people in our customer relations database. So let's start off by loading this from disk. So when we do computer science, it's very common for a program to be broken down into three phases. I've gone over this before. A lot of professors think this is the essence of computer science. And that is phase one, input uh, data. Phase two, transform or analyze the data. And then phase, phase three, output the data. And the input could come from a keyboard, it could come from a file. In this case, I think we'll just start off by reading it from a file. Now, we're gonna be reading names, addresses, and socials, okay? So with what we know right now, we're gonna need to make a vector of strings for the names, and a vector of strings for the addresses. And then we're going to need to make a vector of ints for the socials. I think for the socials, I'm going to make them long longs just because um, a social security number is nine digits long. And so that's pushing up real close to the max value of an int. And I don't like hearing those words. Our, our values are going to be close to, but not quite on the edge of the, um, the boundary where it's going to overflow. And so rather than uh, worrying about that, uh, also we're going to run out of social security numbers in the next couple decades. And so at some point we're going to need to switch away from using ints 
for socials anyway. So, um, I would I would use a long long, maybe a string even. For I'll just use a long long for now. Okay, so what do we need to do to open a file? What's what's the uh, what do I need to type here to open a file for reading? It's called customer database dot text. How do I open? I have stream very good. I have stream. Uh, or use the big int library. Yeah, that's true also. Uh, I'll call this in file. And we're going to load from customer database.txt. Uh, there. And I don't need the space here either. Okay. So we're going to open the file. And then we're going to read from it. While in file is true. Uh, so we're going to read a name. And the name could, is the name one word or is it? more than one word possibly. What do you guys think? Somebody's name. Need the header file? Yeah, theoretically. Notice it works without it. It's because that read.h includes ifstream. Probably first and last name, yeah. Unless we're dealing mm -hmm. with Sharon, Madonna's, and Daya. Most people have more than one name. Some people like Santiana, the shanty I was playing right before class. That dude had Dude, have you guys ever seen General Santa Anna's, Santa Anna's, Santa Anna's uh, name before? General, he was president of um, Mexico a number of times, actually. Uh, yeah. Antonio de Padua, Maria, Severino, Lopez de Santa Anna, y Perez de Liberon. It's, it's a good name. So, eighth president of Mexico, president of the Republic. In office, in office, in office, in office, President of Mexican, United Mexican States, in office, in office, in office, in office, VP. <laughs> like, if you want to talk about like an interesting political career, like the number of times a dude was voted in and out of office was pretty pretty absurd. Yeah, so let's let's support General Santa Ana. Santiana save the day away, Santiana. Like that. So read line is reads a reads a sentence. Okay. This is different from read. Read reads a word, a string. Uh, read line reads a sentence. It's the it's the equivalent of um, uh, get line, but better. It's just better than get line. It just is. Get line and cn break. Right? So if you have a string s and you say cn into s, get line cn s. Do you guys know why this, this code breaks? Do you remember the mine, the trap that happens when you mix double right arrows and get lines together? Like this. My code doesn't have this problem, by the way. Read and read line work together real nice. You know, what is wrong with this code? And technically, from you know it, it, a, a compiling standpoint, the code compiles fine. It won't work right. It won't work the way you expect it to. So it seems like we're going to read a word, and then we're going to read a sentence. But it's not. Does anyone remember why? All right. So what happens when you read a word? Like let's say the person types in hello, hits return. This will hello into s and leave the backslash n in the input buffer. When you do a get line, which reads an entire sentence, get line reads until the next new line. So what does get line return immediately? Nothing. It returns an empty string. So if you mix CNs and get lines together, then what you will end up with is a lot of your get lines, rather than reading a whole sentence from the keyboard, it will re immediately return and put an empty string into S. So how do you handle that? Well, if cn.peak, which tells you which the next character 
that's going to be read is without actually reading it. If scene.peak equals the new line character, basically that. Or there's other ways. You can just get get one character out or whatever. And it's just super irritating. Every time you do a get line, you need to check to see if the first character is a new line. And if it is, throw it away. Because it's probably not what you want. Super, super irritating. Super irritating. My code? No problem. Mix a read. Mix a read line. Works fine. Works fine. No, no problems with uh, things vanishing or returning immediately and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, but we want name to be a uh, sentence as well. So let's do that. And then let's do this long, long SSN. And we're just going to read from the file. Yep. So this code here is going to read a name from the file, an address from the file, so security from the file, and then we're going to add them to the, the vectors. Before we do that, let's just see out all the things. Always, and we'll stop right when, uh, if we uh, hit EOF. Uh, so when, you, when we hit the end of the file and we try reading from it, the end file becomes invalid and then we quit. So let's just see out all the things first. So let's see out um, eh, name, eh, name, eh, name. Yeah. So let's just do that. And sure enough, we're getting all the data out here. This is looking screwed up. Uh, did I not put a space there? I did not put a space there. Okay, so there is our, we've successfully read from disk. Using the read library, you do the same thing with the CN, you know, the IO stream, IF stream library. It's just more tedious. Okay, so now we need to add these to the vectors. So, names.push back name. So we're going to read the data in, we're going to add them to the three different vectors, and um, we'll keep doing that until the file's been read. Then what, what sort of transformation would you like to do on this? We've loaded our customers from here. We could like add a new record, delete a record. What do you feel like? Both. Search. Insert, search, and delete are like the three big operations we typically do on databases. You want, you gonna watch me just do all three of them? That's fine. You can do all three. It's not hard. While true. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how to, uh, let's just do this. Next. Choice is equal to read uh, one, insert new record, two. Man, that wind is going nuts out there. My lord. Insert new record, search records. And three, um, delete correctly. All three is nice. Good. 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 Well, I'll do all three. They're all easy. So I'm making a full database. Reads from disk, adds records. Man, I feel wind actually coming into my, my room right now. Time to get some new windows, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Uh, We'll do all three, and then when we're done, we'll save it to disk. And this is actually a working program, and this will give you actually a good basis for actually making a real program. 
So we'll do that. Um, if choice is less than one or a choice is greater than three, we'll just bail out whatever. Let's add a fourth option here called quit. Okay. And then we'll do some if else statements. Choice equals one. Notice that I set up my if and else statements first. Choice equals two. If choice to the three, else quit. I don't need you anymore. Okay, so what I what I like to do is set these things up in advance, and and realistically speaking, I'll I'll have a constant for each one of these numbers. I'll do something called an enum, and I'll create a, a list of constants one, two, three, whatever they correspond to insert, search, delete, but whatever. That's not our point for today. So the choice is one. Insert a new record. So, okay, string name equals read. Please enter a name. Actually, we want read a line, right? We'll do a name, an address, and we'll do a long, long SSN is equal to read. Please enter an SSM. And then we will just add them to the vectors. CW to change the word, type in the new word, repeat the command with dot. CW erases the word, type in a new word, hit escape, go over to the new place, hit dot, replaces it. Easy. This ends. Addresses, push back address. Okay. So there we go. So we've added the new record to the, the database. Now to search the database, um, what should we search based on? Very windy and smoky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what should we search based on? Name, um, social, address, all three. I don't want to do all three. Just give me one. Address, social. Let's use social, I guess. Social, social security numbers are unique, so they're often used as a primary key in a database to locate people quickly. So we'll do that. So string SSN is equal to read. Shall just YY that one. Okay, so we're gonna read in a social security number and then we're gonna say for um this back equals zero, I is less than uh SSN's dot size. I plus plus. So starting at the beginning of the SSN's vector going to the end, we are going to say if SS, if SSN's dot at I matches SSN. So we're going to go through first time through the loop I is zero. So we look at the first entry in this social security database. If we match, we've got a match, we're gonna print out the whole record. If we don't, we're gonna go on to the next one and check social security dot at i uh, equals one, i equals two, i equals three, i equals four, until we get to the end. And we'll probably make a Boolean called found, set equal to false. And if we ever find something, we'll set that to true. Okay, so once we found the social security number, we know that it's at index five or whatever. So we'll print out names dot at five, address dot at five, and social security number dot at five so that we get the name, the address, and the social. So we've got names dot at whatever. Uh, let's make it a little bit prettier. Name. Address and a 
Asin, which I guess we already know, but you know, whatever. Um, let's print Asin. So. Okay. Right. And then we quit. And then if we get to the end of the for loop, and if found was still false, if found was still false, then we say see out, sorry, record not. You guys with me so far? So the user is going to enter a social. We're going to search through the social security, uh, the vector containing all the social security numbers. Once we hit element five or whatever, we're done. We break out of the loop. We print out names dot at five, address dot at five, social dot at five. So we're hunting through three different vectors. It's really awkward, isn't it? Having three vectors. Wouldn't it be nicer if we could just do this with one vector? I think so, which we will. That's our topic for today. I need to show you the old bad way first to justify this. Now, let's delete a record. So I'm just going to MX to mark that spot. Come down here. Y single quote X to copy up to there. P to paste. So deleting is going to be basically the same. Delete social security number 1234. Except when we find it, instead of instead of printing it to the screen, we are going to print the screen erased. And then we're going to erase from each of these three vectors. So we're going to erase uh, names.erase vector.begin plus i. By the way, um, Don't expect a, a programmer to have any of that stuff memorized, you know. So the programmer's best friend is CPP reference, for, if you're doing C++ programming, that is. And so it's normal to not have any of this stuff memorized. What you do is, if you, if you want to find out how to find something, if you want to find out how to erase something, we use references. It will typically have a lot of tabs up, CPP reference, find, you know, uh, there. and what we do is we come up here and we look at example code. Example code is how I, I don't even look at this stuff usually, or this, you know, uh, this is for sets, this isn't for vectors, okay, the vector class, and the vector class has a find function on it, somewhere. Where are you? Nope, it's a standard library of find, sorry. There you go. So we just come down here, all this stuff. No, I don't care, it's not, I don't care how you made it. This is their source code. This is source code for the standard library. Don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. This is what I care about. Give me an example of how to search through a vector and find stuff in it. So we've got here a vector of integers that are initialized to one, two, three, four. Usually the first example is the most useful one. So we're going to find from the beginning of that vector, I would just type v.begin, but they do it this way for reasons, I guess. It's equivalent. So from the beginning of the vector to the end of the vector, search for n1. What is n1? n1 is 3. So it's going to search from the beginning of the vector to the end of the vector. The end of the vector, by the way, is um, 4, but vector.end actually um, is a special value one off the end of the of, of the end of the vector and I'll show you why that's important in just one second so what the find function does it returns a, an iterator an iterator is a pointer basically it returns a pointer pointing at the element in here so it's gonna be returning a pointer to three because we were searching for three so this is this result one thing here is gonna be a pointer it's an iterator to that element in there if it's not found then it returns a pointer to end. So when you search from the beginning to the end, remember how I just said it a second ago, the end is one past the end of the array. It returns a pointer to that special value off the end of the array. And so, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to find the last element, you know. So when you don't find something, it returns end. So I can show you how that would work. And our source code over here. So rather than doing this whole for loop here, what we could do is say 
can do is say auto result is equal to find from the vector, what vector are we searching for? SSN. SSNs.begin, SSNs.end. Yeah, it's, it's a-okay to not have everything memorized. Like, trust me, like we have, we have some things memorized. We have how to do a for loop memorized and an if statement, like all that, like the basics, anything you use on a daily basis, you'll have it memorized. And there's probably people out there that have find and erase memorized because they do them all the time. And that's fine. And if you don't, that's fine also. You know, your brain keeps kind of the, uh, a working set of the most commonly and most recently used things in it. And if you don't use something often, it throws it away. Like Japanese. Yeah. I'm an ex-Japanese lesson tonight. <laughs> I haven't studied in a week. So we'll see how that goes. So, uh, yeah. So if we wanted to find if um, the social security number is in here, we could do it like this. And this returns this turns an iterator, it's like a pointer, to the SSN. Okay. Um, the trouble with that is that it's not a pointer to the names vector or the addresses vector, because those are different vectors. And so all we could really do with that is like print out the social security number, which we already know. Uh, we could feasibly count how far there's a distance function that counts how far apart two pointers are. It, it's way too much effort. So no, we're not going to use that. We're not going to use find. Uh, but oh yeah, if you wanted to see if it was not found, you could say if result is equal to ssns.end. You'd say, sorry. All right, not found. Okay. So that's how you search through a vector, and that's how you see if it was not found. Or you can do it yourself, like Thanos. Fine, I'll do it myself. I'll just write a for loop and just go through it. And if any of them match, then I know what address, what index all these things are at. And I hope that nobody's erased things. Like if somebody erased the fifth name, and forgot to erase it out of the SSN's database and the address's database, then everything would get screwed up, right? Because the person that was in names.at6 is now at names.at5. And so the name of one person be attached to the address of another person. It gets really ugly and hairy and, and oh Lord, there has to be a better way. And there is a better way. And I'll, I'll show you that in just one second. Um, so, yeah, so we're gonna first delete this. So yeah, we call names.erase and Again, this is, you know, I, I looked this up in the previous class. And I did not have that memorized. But <laughs> I also need to erase it from the other two vectors as well, right? If I if I found the person I'm looking for is in index three, I have to erase it from names, index three, addresses, index three, and socials, index three. You guys with me on this? If I forget any of those, my database is irrevo irrevocably broken. Do, do you see that? Like if I, like right down, right right now I have names and maybe I, I erase from SSNs, all right? Should be names up again. Okay. Do you guys see how this is a really, really bad thing that I just did right here? I erased element five out of my names database and I erased element five out of my social securities database. I forgot to erase it from addresses. Maybe because I added addresses in later and I forgot to go through all my code and update it in every place. Do, do you know what's going to happen here? Like, I'll, like my Holloway Joe guy is going to have the address of some other person. Yeah, you guys see it? Really, honestly, please tell me if you don't see this. Why this is bad. I've got three different vectors. One for names, one for addresses, one for socials. And I'm erasing the person I'm trying to delete from names and socials. I'm not erasing it out of addresses. Yeah. And so now people past that point are all going to have the wrong address. The entire database is going to be wrong past that point. Okay. So let's just do this. Addresses dot erase. Addresses dot begin. Okay. Oh, I need a new line. 
in there. Alright, so oh, I should probably have a print all records too, huh? Let's do that too. And this is why it's nice to just have the quit be the else, because if it's none of the above options, it'll just be a quit. Okay, so for, um, <laughs> let's copy and paste that. Okay, so it's gonna iterate across all three of the vectors, printing out the name, address, and social at the same time. All right, so we'll start off printing all records. There we go. Mr. Yeet's in there. Let's get rid of Mr. Yeet, or let's search for SSN. What's the SSN of Yeet? 243. So 243 went through the records, found Mr. Yeet, their address, their social. I'm now gonna delete 243. If I print all records, you'll see that now Mr. Yeet has been purged from existence. Okay. And then when I quit and I view the customer's database, you'll see that Yeet is still in there because I'm not writing it to disk. Of course not. So, <laughs> final phase. Let's output data. Right? And so for this, uh, we will just do you. So we're going to just save all these things to disk. To save things to disk, we use an output file stream. And what do we call it? Output uh, customer data YY. So rather than an IF stream, we're gonna use an OF stream file. And once we're done reading all this stuff in, I'm gonna say in file button close. I'm just gonna close the file just for safety's sake. And then over here, we are going to write to the file instead of see out, I'm going to write to out file. Okay. And I'm not going to have all the printing printed stuff here. I'm just going to dump the name, the address, and the social. Okay, let's try this again. Let's delete 243 and Mr. Yeet's gone. When we quit and view the customer database, it's still there. Hmm. Answer new record. Rob Thomas, two, three, four, mains. Oh. Please enter a name, please enter a name. Oh. Please enter an address. Copy paste error right there. It's your new record. Rob Thomas, who lives at 1234 Main Street, SSN of whatever. Print all people. Rob Thomas is in there now. When we Oh, because quitting is exiting. <laughs> That's why. That's why. Okay. So it, ne it never gets to the code where it writes to disk. Because right here, we exit. Instead, we need to break out of our main loop instead. Now it should work fine. So let's delete 243. Yeet has been erased. Print all records. Save and quit. Then customer database. And Yeet is gone. And if we add a new record for Rob Thomas... 
four cold clay avenue ssn at 4321 parental records save and quit them customer database you can see we've got a new record there okay so this is um this is a complete working implementation of a very simple uh, CRM customer relations management database. We could add more things to track on each person, right? Like we could add uh, how many times they've come into our company, their sales, their height, their eye color, their hair color, everything on a on a driver's license. We could add, including their driver's license number. But this would get really annoying, right? Are you guys with me on this? Like. Like every time we wanted to keep track of something new for a person, we would have to add another vector and then make sure that every place where we add to a vector and delete from a vector, we're doing it for all 20 vectors. Do you guys, do you guys see why this is like super annoying? Wouldn't it be nice if we could just be like, oh, I don't know, be like, hmm make a new type that had a string name, a string for the address, and a long, long for the SSN. Wouldn't that be cool? Make a new type called person or something. So each person would have a name, an address, and a social security number. And if we did that, we could just write vector of persons like that. Wouldn't that be cool? So rather than all these, we can just do a, a single vector of persons. And if we delete a person out of the database, the name, the address, all that stuff goes, goes away with it. Yeah? Wouldn't that be cool? Making a new type. I don't think you guys learned how to make a new type yet. Very cool, very useful, yeah. This is something called classes or structs. Structs and classes are basically the same thing with one small difference. So here you go. Learning point for today, number one. So the basic syntax is you're going to use the struct keyword, or you can use class with one small difference. And then you basically describe what is inside of a person. So what does every person have in this world? That goes inside of the curly braces here. So struct person says we are creating a new type called person, and then you have to tell it, okay, what what variables does a person have? And so you say, well, I'd like it to have a string for its name, and I'd like for it to have a string for its address, and I'd like for it to have a long, long for its social. And that's it. Pretty cool, huh? Now, how do we use that? Well, we can make a variable of type person now. So we can make, we can make a person named Bob. Okay. And we can set Bob's name using learning point number two. Bob dot name equal to Bob Smith. If we want to set its address, Bob dot address is equal to 7878 First Street. The dot operator is how you access the sub variables in Bob. Okay. So Bob is three variables living under one roof. Bob is 
uh, like three raccoons in a trench coat trying to go to an R-rated movie. Okay. Bob is a name, an address, and a social joined together in one variable we call Bob. And we can use Bob directly. We don't have to use the dot operator every time. We use the dot operator when we're going to access Bob's name, Bob's address, or Bob's social. So in, in chat, please tell me, how can I set Bob's social to be 911? In social, uh, in social, in chat, tell me, how can I set Bob's social security number to be 911? There's a fire alarm on campus. Interesting. Yeah. Is social security, Sia, is social security a string or is it a long, long? Hmm? Yeah, you got it. You're good. Bomb.ssn is equal to 911. Yep, just like that. Okay. Now, what can we do with Bob? Well, we can add him to the person's database. So we can say database dot push back Bob. Okay. And then, you know, we can say for every person in the person's database print out their you know, p.cout, p.name, oops, so for every person in the database we can print out their name, their address, and their social. Do you see how we're using the dot, the dot operator here? So p is three variables in one. So we can't just print out p. We, uh, C++ does not know how to print a P out. Okay? We tried printing bo Bob or P or whatever out. It doesn't know how because it's like, all right, do you want me to print out the name first, then the address, then the social? Do you want me to, you know, address and name? Like, it, it doesn't know how, how to print out a person. So you have to, there's a way you can tell it to, to how to print it out, but... Uh, for now, we'll just stick to this, where you just say, okay, print out the name, print out the address, print out the social. And we can add more people if we wanted. Uh, person, Sally, and uh, you can say Sally's name. Sally's address. We need to add her as well, all right? So push back Bob, push back Sally. So if you run the, the program now, you'll see that it prints out Bob's name, address, and social. It prints out Sally's name, address, and social. Okay. So do you see how this is a lot nicer than what we had before? It's so like if we wanted to erase Bob, we don't have to come in here and like delete, delete Bob from every single, you know, delete him out of the names database, delete him out of the address database, delete him out of the social database and hope that we didn't forget something. All we have to do if we want to delete Bob is come up here and say database dot erase, erase dot begin, first element, easiest way of doing it. So. This uh, erases Bob from existence. You guys see how much nicer this is? Are you guys with me on this? Like, you just have a variable, and you can have I don't know, 50 different member variables here. You can have hair color and height and income and city zip code. And, you know, split all those out. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a really nice way of organizing your stuff. So anytime you've got a variable, like a person, that has multiple attributes, multiple things about them that you want to say, then it's pretty normal to just put them into a class. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so what's the difference between a class and a struct? Well, this code here, 
is exactly equivalent to class person public. That's the different line. String name. And don't forget the semicolon. Semicolon's really weird. We all forget it. Okay. One of the best things that Java did is they got rid of the need for a semicolon there. They copied the C language, but they're like, that semicolon's dumb, doesn't belong, and they got rid of it. Best thing that Java did. So this code here is exactly the same as this code here. So we'll call this a person two or something. So it stops yelling at me. So what one line do you guys see different between a struct and a class? Hmm? Public, yeah. And so what public means, all variables in the public section are visible to main. So in main, main can do things like say bob.name, bob.address, because they are public. Okay. Structs are public by default. Classes are private by default. So if we had a private variable, like, uh, and we can do private up here. Uh, we can add int password or something like that. If we tried saying bob.password equals one, two, three, equals one, two, three, four, won't compile. Because anything that's private cannot be accessed by main, by anybody outside of the class. It's private. It's just only you and your friends can see it. So um, password is a private member of person. You cannot access Bob's privates in main. It's not allowed. Okay. So um, classes default to private, structs default to public. That's the only difference. These, these two these two uh, things here are exactly the same. They've got three private, uh, three public member variables and one private, one private, three public. Just structs default to public by default, classes default to private. That's the only difference. And so for this class, we're probably going to be using structs more than classes because the benefit of using private member variables and stuff like that won't be obvious until CSI 41, where we go into object oriented programming. For this class, we're going to treat classes as a convenience to organize our data mostly. Okay. You guys understand? So, Cybox so uses classes. I tend to use structs for this class. Just understand they're, they're equivalent. This is the only difference. Okay. Right. So now let's refactor our code to use classes. Okay. So we don't need all of you anymore. Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. So the old code was printing from the names database and the addresses database and the socials database. I'm going to get rid of that old code and just use this range based for loop here. And technically I should be making this const reference. So it's a little bit faster and I can make it look pretty, I guess, I don't know, but whatever. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So this says for every person in the database, print out their name, address, and social. And then we'll do the same thing down here rather than dumping it to a file by accessing the names and the addresses and the socials, all that gets pulled out. And I am just going to Y5Y, paste. And rather than writing it to the screen, I'm gonna write it to a file. So this is gonna get a out file, CW out, oops, CW, out file and then dot does the last command again 
So this is going to dump all of the records that we have in the database to the output file. And then we're going to come in here and refactor all this code to use one vector instead of three. So I'm just going to pull out all three of those vectors, then it's going to flag all of them, all of the places. So, okay, so we've just, okay, so this is the input thing here. So we just read from a file, a name, address, and social. So we're going to create a person called temp. Temp dot name equals name. Temp dot address equals address. Temp dot SSN. SSN. So what I'm doing is I, I have these variables here, here called name, address, social security number, and I'm copying them into temp. So temp's name is name. Temp's address is the address we just typed in. And technically, we could probably do this even a little bit better, huh? Yeah, let's, let's see if it's even better. You guys see what I did there? So I'm making a, a new empty person and I'm setting their name directly from reading. So I don't have it three different temporary variables now. I just have one temporary variable and I'm reading into the temporary's name, temporary's address, temporary social, and then I'm going to add it to the database. Database dot push back. You guys see this? So I make a new variable named temp. Temp is a person. Person is three variables together. It's a name, address, and social. So I can access the name part of temp by saying temp.name. So that's its own variable, temp.name. It's a string. And then I'm just reading into it from the file. Then temp.address is a different string. I'm reading into that from the file. Temp.social is a long, long. I'm reading that from the file. Do you guys see? And then I can just add temp. Okay. It's cool. You like it? Okay. And then we can do the same thing here, I think. Yeah, for insert new record. mx to set a mark, y to single quote x to copy up to the mark, p to paste, greater than sign seven greater than sign to, to move seven lines to the right, one in, indentation level. And rather than reading from a file for this one, we're just going to read from um, cn. Give a little prompt here. From the standard input, please enter an SSN. And then we're going to add the person to the database. Okay. What does database look like? It's a vector. So database is just a vector of people. So it's an array. Uh, every element in the array is actually three variables next to each other. And so if we were to delete anybody out of the database, it would delete the name, address, and social all at the same time. It's impossible to have half deleted elements in this, which is what we want. It's, it's really nice. Um, this is a much, much cleaner code than what we had before, right? So now when we, when we are going to add a new person to the database, we just read their name, address, social, put them together into a person, and then add that person to the database. It's not database.txt, it's, it's, it's just a vector. It's just a vector. And then at the end of the day, we're going to dump it to a file. 
down here called customer database. Okay, so then let's move on, search the records. Please enter an SSN. So rather than, we don't have an SSN's database anymore, so what we're gonna say is if database dot at i dot SSN equals SSN. Because database dot at zero is gonna be the first person in our database. And a person has three things, dot SSN, dot name, dot address. And so this will be Bob, right, or whatever. So if Bob's SSN matches the SSN we're looking for, found is true, we print the record, and uh, rather than this, it's going to be database dot at i dot name database dot at i dot address and the social security is just the social security we look for. And the person's name would be temp. Uh, the person's name is not temp. The person's name is temp dot name. Temp is the name of the variable. So this is just the name of the variable. I'm making a variable of type person. I can call this variable whatever I wanted. It's fine. Um, so I'm making a variable of type person. And that variable has three variables within it. It's got a variable for the temp, uh, temp.name, which is its name. It's got a variable for its address, which is called temp.address. It's got a variable for its social, which is temp.social. Then when we do pushback, when we do pushback, all three of these variables get copied into the vector together. They always come together. You can't partially copy it. And then temp is thrown away. Yeah. How do you identify specific people within the database? Well, uh, so we're going to identify them by social. So what, so the user's going to type in search for social 4321. Okay, right there. So SSN is 4321. So starting at the first element in the database, going to the last element in the database, one record at a time, we say if record i, which will be zero the first time, so if the first person in the database, if their social matches the social typed in, then we found the record. If we go through the whole thing and didn't find any, then we're gonna print out, sorry, record not found. So we are searching through it like this. So. If element zero in the database has a social that matches the social typed in, if element one social matches the social typed in, if element two's social matches the social typed in, it does that, it goes through the whole database looking at the social of each person in the database until it gets to the end. Temp is a fine name for a person. Yeah, like I was telling in the previous class, like if you ever want to screw with databases, change your name legally to null like first name null, last name null. There's so many databases that if an error occurs, the, the record will just say null. And so they'll have scripts that go through and delete all null records out of it. And so like, if you don't want to be picked up by any marketing companies, you know, uh, you know, they're about to mass mail a bunch of people. They'll usually have a check in there saying like, if first name is null, skip, you know, so. Uh, and there's actually people whose name is null and like they'll show up for an airplane flight and their seat's been given away because they purchased it, but then the the airline database goes through and deletes all entries that are null, that have a null name anywhere in it. And so, <laughs> so they'll show up for their flight and they don't have a flight because their seat's been given away, even though they paid for it. So uh, yeah, if you want your, change your, uh, license plate to say null, then all the automatic license plate readers will return null, you know. Oh, couldn't read it. Throw it away. <laughs> Not missing number. Yeah, missing number is uh, the, the error Pokemon in the, in the first one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's how you search through it. Does this make sense to y'all? So database.at i is going to be a person. So it's going to... The first time through the loop, it's going to be the first person in the database. Next time through the loop, it's going to be the second person in the database. Next time through the loop, it's the third person in the database. And every person has, via the dot operator, three things. You can do dot SSN, dot address, dot name. And so we are grabbing the SSN of that person and seeing if it matches this variable here. 
we find it, we print it out. Then for deleting, it's going to be the same code uh, very closely. Da, 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 da. I might even copy all this. MX, Y single quote X, P to paste, D to shift five to delete to the matching close brace. Uh, okay, so if we get a match, so deleting is very similar to searching, right? You have to search through the whole thing until you find it. And once you found it, then you delete that record instead of printing. So instead of printing it out, we're just gonna print out erased from existence. We're gonna call the erase member variable erase dot erase. Does that exist or is it the other way around? Uh, database dot erase data base dot begin plus i so if we have found the fifth person is uh in, or the six percent the person at index five is a match, then we erase the record at element five. That pulls it out, prints erased, good to go. And I think we're done. I think that's the whole thing. So we now have the customer relations management database that if we print all records, we can get Bob Saylor and Sally Brown and Holloway Joe, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Um, we can insert a new record called, who wants to be, who wants to be in the record? Who wants to be in the database? Tim Portnoff. All right. So Tim Portnoff. All right. Tim, what's your uh, address? <laughs> and what's what's your social? <clears throat> Tim, just writing this down. Uh, yeah, it's, we have pauses streaming on YouTube. One, two, three, Drury Lane. Okay. And uh, what, what's your what's your social there, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. Can't remember. Huh? It's rough. Okay. Print all records. So we can see that Tim's in there now with a fake address as well as a fake social for those of you on YouTube watching this at home. And, uh, <laughs> and if we want to delete him, uh, so if we want to delete Tim, we type in 56789. And then when we print all the records, you can see that. Uh, nobody follows Rob Thomas now. It was Rob Thomas followed by Tim Portnoff. Rob Thomas is now the last record in the, in the database. All right. Uh, search. Let's see if Rob Thomas is in here. Uh, yep. Rob Thomas is in there. Pulls up the database. And then let's insert a new record. Let's put uh, Min Corelli in. Uh, address is that, that, that. That's social quit and then when we view the customer database you can see that min Corelli is now in there and we relaunch it we can print all records it reloads it from disk we can delete three four four three two and quit and it's gone now so every time we run the program this is a very common thing right you load from disk and then you do your thing and then you save your state when you're done and then you can resume when you launch it again so you put it to your real address now. Yeah. How would you sort these alphabetically? Oh, interesting question. Um, we're out of time for today though. Uh, there, there's a couple different ways of doing it. So, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, if you put a less than operator on the class, which will be on the Zybooks, I think for either this week or next week, a less than operator would um, allow you to pass it to sort because you need to say what makes one person greater than another? What makes Tim Portnoff greater than Mincarelli, right? And it doesn't know by default. It's like, do you want me to sort by the name, the address, the social? I don't know. So that's one way to do it. Another way is you could do something like this, like um, we'll sort by name, taking in const person p1, const person I reference P2 and return P1.name is less than P2.name. That's that's the way you do it. And then when you sort it, 
like every time we insert a record, maybe we'll sort afterwards. Um, sort database.begin, database.end. And then this, uh, and then see how it, it, it shouldn't compile, huh? Uh, then it'll, uh, then we want to pass in sort by name. So if you do that, then that will sort the database by name. And you can have a different one. You, have a diff you can have a different function for sort by name, sort by address, sort by social, following that pattern. And uh, if you do that. Answer a new record. Uh, Bill Kearney on 6666 Overwatch, Overwatch, Overwatch Lane. 777, 7777, okay? Then when we print all records, you can see that it is all sorted by name alphabetically now. So Assassin's Creed's first, Bill Kearney's second, Bob Saylor's third, Holly Joe's, so on and so forth, so. Yep. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, but that's probably the easiest way. So you pass sort a third function like this, or you use a lambda for it, or you can use the lesson operator, um, there's options, but that's kind of probably the easiest. So you make a function called sort by name, and you just basically tell it to compare. So it, the sort function will pass to it one person and another person, and it has to tell you which one of them is smaller. And it does that by comparing their names. And there you go. Make sense, Tim? All right, so I'll put this up into a uh, struct demo for you. So if you guys want to copy this code, it is here. You can take a look at it, copy it, examine it, love it, learn it, laugh at it, live, learn, laugh, I don't know, whatever it is. And then we'll come back on Wednesday and continue the discussion of classes then. All right, so thanks everybody. Thanks for coming out. Good to see you all again. And uh, you know the muffin man that lives on Drury Lane. <laughs> I'll see you guys then. All right. Peace.